Barkley, he's the head of the Barkley House. Agnes Barkley is his devoted and loving spouse. They've got kids, Terry, Roger, and Chester, too. And all of them are Barkleys, through and through. Cause they're the Barkleys, and they're okay. And Arnie Barkley, with a very open mind, is always first to let you know his own opinionated ways. But even though he may grumble and get uptight, just remember Arnie Barkley's bark is worse than his bite. The meeting of the Better Living Through Friendship Teenage Club will please come to order. Marsha Mudson. Present. Ethel Bowser Bag. You can see I'm here. <laughs> As you know, this is a secret session. Tonight's decision is for teenage ears only. Not that we have anything against parents. We need them. After all, who would overprotect us? <laughs> oh, hi, girls. Having a meeting about something? A secret meeting, not for parents' ears. <laughs> Sorry. I'll leave and take my ears with me. <laughs> now, we were about to discuss a matter that's very secret. Oh. Oh, um, I was just passing through and I thought we girls could break for some lemonade. I move that this club spends a holiday weekend in the Great Kennel Mountains. I double I. Well, uh, before you move any further, I move the motion that I go along as chaperone. But no fathers. Girls only. I don't know how you ever talked me into this, Agnes. Teenagers overrunning everything that's overrunnable. Oh, Arnie, that's not so. No wonder they call it teenage. It's when the teens age their parents. <laughs> Well, that's about everything. Are you sure you can handle these things, Agnes? You know, the girls? Oh, of course, dear. Don't forget, I was a girl once myself. Yeah, but now you're a woman. It's not the same. Oh, Arnie, really? Okay, okay. See you Sunday. Bye, Dad. Bye, Mr. Barkley. Three female girls. Alone in the mountains. They'll have fun, plenty of fresh air, and a rest. And that's what I'm worried about. Arrest for troublemaking, arrest for riots, and even worse, their pictures on the six o'clock news. Oh, come on, Dad. It's not like the campgrounds are gonna be overrun by motorcyclists. What's that? Motorcyclists. <laughs> that does it. The only way those girls are gonna stay out of trouble is for me to keep an eye on them. And knowing Dad, that's gonna mean trouble for everybody. <laughs> occasional whiff of barbecued ribs. Don't move, fellow bird watchers. There's our first black-coated, yellow-breasted meadowlark. Meadowlark? Oh, no. That's just my outdoorsy sun hat. <laughs> wow, Mrs. Barkley. Just take a breath of this air. Oh, I'm not used to air. I live in a city. <laughs> well, what do you know? So that's air. It makes a body kind of... Sleepy. I think I'll take a nap. While Mom's napping, let's take a hike. They say it's great for your legs. Bunk. Ever see a chorus girl with a knapsack? <laughs> I haven't done so much walking since the elevator strike. But it's so rewarding. Look at this scenery. Yeah, look. It's dreamy. Boys! <laughs> and they're headed our way. <laughs> Hi, girls. My name's Dan Shepard. I'm a professor of botany. This is one of my prize students, Paul. 
Hi. A real professor? Where's your beard? Well, I shaved it off so you could tell me from my students. We're doing a study on the evergreens. What a coincidence. We're all so interested in nature. And nature lovers. <laughs> Great. Now, let me demonstrate how nature's intelligence works. She puts bark around the trees so they're protected. And spaces between the trees so we can have picnics. <laughs> Oh, we're too late. Terry's joined up with that motorcycle gang. It looks like they're planning something. It looks to me like it's a meeting of nature lovers. Yeah, and that's what I said about Attila the Hun. But, Dan, why do we have to watch out for the girls? Yeah, that's why Mom is up here. You know how easygoing mothers are. Their daughters can wrap them around their little fingers. Now, follow me. We're going to find out what they're up to. Dad, watch where you're going. I know where I'm going. I'm going... Now will you give up this crazy idea, Dad? Are you kidding? Look at the trouble those motorcyclists have got me into already. And I don't even know them. <laughs> Professor Dan said to collect as many specimens as we can. But remember, only one of each specimen. I found the prettiest plant with red leaves, and I want to share it with you girls. That's poison oak! Poison oak? Yeah. We're not spending the rest of our vacation scratching. Break out your lotion on the double. You sure this isn't maple syrup? My face feels like a waffle. They're up to something, all right. They're disguising themselves. Some weekend, sitting in a tree. Yeah, it's for the birds. Now, I'm only doing this to protect Terry because I'm her parent. Think of a world without parents. You kids would have to sign your own report cards. Come on, Chess. Dad doesn't need us up here. Let's take a swim at the lake. Can you swim okay? If not, I'll float. I'm full of wood spinners. Well, if there were no parents in this world, children would have to be born all by themselves. They'd have to raise themselves, kiss themselves goodbye when they went to school. A father is the foundation of the household, the glue that holds the family together. All right, Chicken Little, fly down from your perch and I'll take you back to the hen house. Huh? Oh, you're mistaken, sir. You see, I was talking to them. I'll come quietly. Sir, I can explain why I was sitting in that tree talking to myself. Every season we find someone thinking he's a bird. Must be the heat up here. Uh, wait, that's our dad, sir. He was in a tree protecting our sister. I didn't see any girl in that tree. I'll have to have my eyes checked. Mr. Ranger, there's something going on out there. I don't know what it is, but I gotta keep my daughter from getting into trouble. So you gotta let me stay. I'll, I'll, I'll do anything. Hmm. Well, we can use some extra help. Suppose I deputize you as an assistant ranger. I never shrink where duty calls. All right. Raise your right hand. I shall protect the trees, the flora, and the fauna. I shall protect the trees, but before that flora, I'm going to protect my Terry. I'm a deputy ranger, see? Uh-huh. My first violator. Who is it, Bob? All right, you squirrels, eating peanuts and leaving the shells around. I should run you in as litter bugs. You butterflies, off the flowers. We've had a lot of pollen reported missing. You can see he never took biology. Now look at that. Some wise guy carved Henry loves Shirley on one of our trees. All right? Everybody named Henry and Shirley, out of the park. Dad, you talk like that and everybody will hate you. I'm used to that. I'm a bus driver. Now keep a lookout for Terry. Uh-huh. There they are. By the lake. Dad, you can't be serious. I'm worse than that. Now hand me that reed. But, Dad... But nothing. This time I won't fail. <laughs> Just like the commandos did. I'm going to sneak up on them and find out what they're up to. Your mother...
father's a living doll, Terry. You can say that again. But your father, well, I hate to say this, he's a nice, lovable worrywart. Hope that old headphone I rigged up to that other reed helps pop here underwater. <laughs> Maybe worrying is a part of getting old, like acid stomach. I wonder if we'll worry when we marry and have kids. I've decided not to. If my little girl's out on a date, I won't worry if she stays out till midnight, or one, or three. What's my little girl doing out so late? You know who you sound like? Who? Your father. <laughs> Come on, girls. Let's go back to the tent. Hey, wait a minute. I wonder why that one reed seems taller than the others. Maybe it takes vitamins. Let's bring it back and show it to the professor. <laughs> Hey, Mom, when did you learn how to toast marshmallows? As a girl, when I met your father, my mother always said the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Did you get to his heart? I sure hope to say I did. Just look at his stomach. Just look at his stomach. That's chest muscle. Just wasn't room for all of it up above. Well, sleepy bye time for me. I get up with the birds. And night, girls. Night. What are we supposed to be, night owls? Shh. Their chaperone has conked out. Now let's hear what they plan. Then it's settled. Tomorrow will be the big rush on the malt shop. Malt chop, here we come. Hop, two, three, hop, two, three. Did you hear that, Raj? They're going to take over a malt shop. Three teenage girls. And those motorcyclists. Yeah, first it's malt shops, then the world. Look, Dad, why don't you just go over and talk to Terry? What? And have her think I'm spying on her? But you are spying on her. Not only the father. Arnie the Ranger, and Arnie the Ranger doesn't want to tip his hand. Oh, brother. <laughs> Men on the moon I can accept, but my own father dressed up to look like a teenager? What better way to infiltrate? This way I can move in on a mall shop undetected, gather the evidence, round up those motorcyclers, and keep Terry and the girls out of trouble without causing any trouble. Well, maybe your clothes look teenage, but your face still looks middle-aged. You underesteem your father. I have him put on my chateau. That's French for hat. Buddy, pal! Just remember, keep your cool. What's important to us is the total condition of the forest ecology. Have you girls seen any unhealthy trees? We did see a grove of trees with peeling bark just north of here. We could meet you there. Howdy, gang. Suck it to you, baby. Cool, man, cool. Rest the flesh. And give me some skin and all that there. Uh, what'll it be? Hit me with a double malt and don't spare the straws, baby. So far, so good. Now to find out what they're planning. You know, if we can get an early enough start, we could cover a lot of territory. So that's it. The malt shop is just small potatoes. They're gonna take over the whole territory. Then it's settled. We're committed to the cause. Great. We'll pick you up at the big fir tree tomorrow, right after dawn. Dawn? So that's when they're gonna strike. Well, tomorrow, Ranger Barkley strikes first. <laughs> Dad. We've been driving around for hours. Can I help it if all those fir trees look alike? Well, what am I gonna do? By now, they've already launched their invasion. Invasion? There's not a soul in sight. There's not even a squirrel in sight. Only a couple of nuts. Us. There's only one thing to do, Raj. Stop the Jeep. We'll split up. You take the Jeep, and I'll go by foot. We'll track them down. Three girls make six tracks. Find six tracks, and you find three girls. Okay, Dad. And when you've made the forest safe for democracy, we'll celebrate over some peanut butter sandwiches. Isn't it terrific how they make peanut butter out of peanuts? No more terrific than Dad. He's making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> you know what you girls have told us may save this tree's life? What'll you do? Give it a sap transfusion? 
Oh, Ethel, you shouldn't make fun of science. Well, it certainly was nice of you to invite me along on your field trip. Our pleasure, Mrs. Barkley. Conservation is a great way for parents and kids to work together. Hey, look what's coming. A ranger jeep. And look who's in it. Roger and Chester. Hi, Mom. Sis. Boy, are we glad to see you. What are you boys doing up here? I thought you were at home with your father. Well, it's a long story. You see, it all started when... And when we left Dad, he was setting out to track you down. Boy, that sounds like a classic case of an overprotective parent to me. Uh, which direction did you say he was headed? North. Wow, rough country back there. We better find him before he gets in trouble. Oh, uh, what trouble could Dad get into? What are we waiting for? Let's go! <laughs> Finding the girl's tracks in the forest isn't as easy as I thought. If this was the house, their tracks would be all over the carpet. Now, let's see. What would Daniel Boone do? He'd use a magnifying glass. <laughs> Arnie the tricky tracker is out on the trail. Uh-huh. Tracks. I'd better forget about using a magnifying glass. It makes tiny ant tracks look like big girl tracks. What's that? Uh-huh. Six tracks. And six tracks means three girls. <laughs> now I got him. Neat little rendezvous for a secret meeting, Terry. But you forgot one thing. Your dad's got as many brains in his head as you've got in your little fingers. <laughs> Terry, that's no way to answer your father. A little respect. <laughs> A bear. A full-grown bear. Bye. Guys, <laughs> two bears. And I can't get out. Good bears. Me part bear, too, on my father's side. Now. <laughs> I think they're becoming friendly. Hey, what are you doing? Put me down! Help! Call the rangers! The police! My congressman! Help! 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 Uh-oh! And that sounds like Arnie! And it sounds like he's in trouble! Follow that yell! Help! Help! <laughs> now stop it! <laughs> stop it! This must be a game! They think of a ball of porridge! <laughs> All righty, now I've got a game. Hide and seek. I'll run out there, hide behind some nice little tree, and... Fellas, please don't like me so much. <laughs> it's Dad, all right, and he's stuck with two bears. Two bears? Oh, dear. Oh, what do we do? I've got an idea. It's wild, but it's the only one I've got. <laughs> Okay, Raj. All set for Operation Rescue, Arnie? Let's see. Inflatable life raft, air bottle, butterfly net, and a long pole with a feather on the end. Yep, all set. Hang on, Pop! <laughs> yeah! Roger, what are you doing with a motorcycle? Rescuing you. In that case, I'll make an exception. Hurry! I hope my bowling isn't off. Okay, let's blow this thing up like a giant party balloon. I sure hope you know what you're doing. Right now, I'm hoping that raft doesn't pop. I'll use the feather pole. You get set with the butterfly net. Gotcha. Kitchy, kitchy, coo. <laughs> it's working. 
Okay, Dad, jump! Stand by for a splashdown. You could have used a bigger net. Sorry, Pop. Okay, Dad, pull the plug and pull out. I guess it was my love for Terry that made me overprotective. That's right, dear. And the love of those bears for you almost squeezed you out of existence. I get your point, Agnes. Don't think we don't need your love, Dad. But we need your understanding, too. You've got it, Terry. And you've also got my promise that never again will I spy, snoop, eavesdrop, or be suspicious. You won't? Nope. Because the next time you go away, your father will be with you. 